All right, hi, I'm uh, Craig Kirstein's. Uh, apologies for my English, just like Kenneth's. Um, Kenneth's probably is better than mine, so. Um, uh, so like Kenneth mentioned, I work at Heroku. Um, thanks again for having both of us over here. Uh, it's been great so far. Um, so I'm going to cover a little bit of knowledge hopefully everyone should know first, and then talk about where we should go from there in Django. Um, so everyone's used to Django. We're used to what a project is. A project is just a website. Um, this is actually per the Django website. It's a collection of apps, and it does something. It does a lot of things. An application. We use these all the time. We use Django Debug Toolbar, which is an application. We use Sentry. Um, these are essentially something that's reusable, whether it's a blog, a uh, piece of a CMS. So not even an entire CMS, but comments, tagging, all of these things are, are reusable. And that's great for us. So within Django, we have a project. And it has apps. It has a lot of apps. Um, over time, we keep adding apps to our projects because it's easy to do. Um, they're already built. It's simple. We don't have to rewrite code. Not having to write code is great. <laughs> so an example, we have something like a, a tickets app for support. We have something like a frequently asked questions app. And we have a, a frequently asked questions creator. Um, all of these are individual apps, and this is great. So this is reusability, right? We have a bunch of apps. Uh, we go to the cheese shop regularly. We search for them. Um, the hardest part is finding out which ones to use, but we, we can solve that problem other ways. But the problem is, just because we can reuse an app doesn't mean we can scale an application. When we put in 20 apps, 30 apps, 40 apps, all into one project, um, it doesn't mean it will scale, and it doesn't mean you can easily maintain it. Uh, when you upgrade an app and it breaks things, we, we've all been there. And it's a few hours of updating all of our code to work with the new version. So uh, talking about how do we get from a, an app to a service. Um, what is a service? Um, is it SOAP? Is it XML? Is it JSON? It, essentially, it's just a contract. It's something that you can call out and have the same response every time. It doesn't change. It's predictable, similar to an app. When we drop an app in, it just works. Um, except for it's, it's not built into your code. It's something you call out to. OK, so what? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of services we use, the GitHub API, all these different things. So why? yeah, we use services every day. Um, so let me talk a little bit why service, services matter. Um, teams grow. So we had an application that had a ticket um, and a frequently asked question. So we had two teams. Um, then we, uh, our, our team grows. We started with four developers, and we went to six. Um, and then we went, added some marketing people, and we have some marketing pages, uh, marketing campaigns, and we build apps for that. And we suddenly have a lot of teams, and we have a lot of apps, and we have a lot of code. So we went from three applications to nine applications and one code base. Who's here worked on large code bases of a lot of apps and put a lot of testing in there? And you run continuous integration, and you test constantly. And when the build breaks, you chase down someone and make them buy you coffee while they fix the build. Um, this isn't how we scale software. This is how we slow down our ability to move. So going back to what is a service, um, a defined contract for communicating. I say curl create a, a frequently asked question. Um, I could do this in a, an app, basically have my frequently asked question creator, or I could call out to a service. So with requests, um, we have data, and we post it. And this creates a, a frequently asked question. Um, in this case, maybe it's, uh, you know, how do I get to the conference? Um, and in this case, when we upgrade a version, we don't have to break everything. Um, with an app, when you upgrade, everything in your project has to support that new version or the app itself has to support that backwards compatibility. This is a lot of management of who's calling what code. And I don't enjoy 
looking through code to find out what's breaking my application every time I upgrade something. But I also don't like running on Django 092 because I don't want to upgrade. So the key here is I, I bump a version and I say this is also related to all of these tickets that I had. Um, so down here I, I change my version, but this still works. So now with the service we have both of these. It's very similar to an application, we're just supporting multiple versions as we iterate and we don't have to worry about the backwards compatibility in every app, um, we can do it at a more global level. And then other applications that rely on this can change gradually. So what is a service? How do we build them? Um, we're familiar with Django apps, so what is a service? It's very, very similar to an app, but slightly different. So first we have a provider. This is the host. This is, um, in Kenneth's example, this is the GitHub API. This could be an internal dev server. This could be staging. And we can have you know, providers at all sorts of places. Um, actually, how many people here use Sentry? So Sentry, a great example. It's an app almost everyone drops into the Django project. But now, um, instead of scaling Sentry, um, if you're a bad developer and write bad code and you have lots of errors, well, you could, Sentry could crash your app. Who wants their error handling application and logging application to crash their app? <laughs> Um, it's one of those cases where it, I don't want to have to worry about this. I just want someone else to own it. Um, so actually, I uh, talked with David Kramer and said, you know, I shouldn't have to run Sentry myself. And now we have GetSentry.com where you can just post to it. You don't have to run Sentry, and he takes care of scaling it. So it's the endpoint. Um, in this case, we had uh, version 1 create for something. We can have version 2. Um, version 1 never changes. It always acts like version 1. When you post an issue to it, it's always the same. And the contract. So for this endpoint, this contract always exists. It never changes. It's backwards compatible. And as we change over time, we can add new endpoints and track who calls the old one, who calls the new ones, go yell at other developers for not using the new one. It's easier to manage in that form. So with an app, we had URLs, we had views, we had models. With a service, we have a provider, we have an endpoint, and we have a contract. If uh, these actually work together very well, though often when we have an app that calls a service, we don't need our models, but everything else works the same. We call out and essentially use the service as kind of our remote data lookup, our remote models. Um, they play very well together. It doesn't mean we don't need apps. We just need apps that consume services so we can scale teams more easily. So we don't have to have 30 application projects that all change code regularly. It can be a defined service. So I mentioned before that uh, when you have a, an app, it means you can get reusability, but it doesn't give you scalability. It doesn't mean it's maintainable because you have 100 people committing to the same code base. Here you have an application that doesn't change and the services change. They're all small applications. So it enables scalability and maintainability. <laughs> and there's actually a blog post going up later today on all of this as well in case any of the detail, and hopefully it'll get into more detail as well. So any questions? Uh, I have a question regarding the versioning. It's, uh, it's something which almost get, like, come from free with most of the libraries that help you to build the uh, API. Right. And uh, on one hand, it's, it's really nice because you have this V1, V2, V3, and you start to have this idea that in V2 you are going to change your database schema and uh, it will get much better and you will add attributes, eventually change the name. And uh, then how do you support V1? Yeah. Um, so it comes back to kind of database design, but your database design should be um, backwards compatible. So you should add things that support null. And it's, it's a long process to kill off v1, but you essentially gradually deprecate. You see which other applications and services are calling v1, and you engage with them directly. So I mean, you support things for, for quite a while, and you gradually roll off of it. It's, it's not a I don't have to worry about it, but it's, I don't have to break their code as I move to V2 and V3 and V4.
Uh, it's what I have learned since uh, five months at my new uh, company. Uh, it's Vaseline, not heat or material, or excuse me, it is the Vaseline, but uh, using sunburn.org, I don't know if anyone here uh, uses this, but it's very, very important. It means if I change the major version, it breaks totally the, the API, and I see it's, um, the X, it's just a new feature of the X. This is very, very important. And I didn't see this very frequently on GitHub projects, or uh, on the each time I want to use an app, I don't want to break totally my software because I just upgraded it. So uh, take care and uh, take care of it and read this uh, standard. Seriously. Can you spell it? Sender. Sender. S-E-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-M-C-